Hi, welcome to Max tutorial number 14. It's really the second part of intro to basic MIDI, but in this we're going to make a computer MIDI keyboard, i.e. a way to play a MIDI keyboard from your computer keyboard, right? So, if you were not watching tutorial 13 and you don't have all this stuff in your patcher, go back and watch tutorial 13. But if you've already watched tutorial 13, then here we are in tutorial 14, ready to make our amazing computer to MIDI keyboard. Let's just call it our keyboard. So here we go. Um, unlock your patcher if it's not already, and I'm going to just start cleaning up here and getting rid of stuff to make some room um, for our keyboard and that way I can drag stuff around down to the bottom and whatnot. There we go. So I'm just getting rid of all these. I just, we don't need them anymore. We, we know what these things are mostly. Okay. So let, oops, there's one over there. Okay. There we go. So let's just go ahead and uh, type letter N and type K slider. And if, as soon as you type KS, you'll pretty much get a K slider. And K slider, for whatever reason, stands for piano keyboard. And here it is. Um, and what this piano keyboard does is allow you to have a visual idea of what you're doing like you can click on this with your mouse and oops if it were locked and play the notes that you might be playing there and we can um, unlocking your mouse we can very quickly see what it does here uh, so just type a uh, two different messages here m and m and then find the outlet here connected to the right hand outlet here and on the right hand outlet here sorry I should have said inlet to the right hand inlet there I said outlet I know I meant inlet okay let's lock our patcher again and just see what's going on here so if I push um, this is a C um, let's see what we get here I push down and you get 48 and 37 and if I push the next key up which is this black key I get 49 and 44. Um, so I will tell you that this is the key number and this is the velocity. And the way they do that on this visual keyboard is the higher up here you press, let's press the C again, up near the top, boink, look at that, 48 and 120. In MIDI, 127 is the maximum so that's pretty loud and then if I click down near the bottom I get 48 and 8 and then if I click it again I can never remember how to turn them off in this particular mode I think they just dry out after a while or something I don't even know anyway so when you go up the keys you you'll be able to do this and you'll see it going 57 59 um, it's going by twos because I'm skipping the black keys uh, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. And then this is telling us what the volume is um, in MIDI, which is between 0 and 127. Well, that's all well and good, but how do we take these two numbers and make a sound out of them? Now, for those of us watching the last video, we're probably thinking, gosh, those numbers are really similar to these numbers. And you would be correct to say so. So let's um, take uh, unlock your patcher again, and we'll make a new object. Type N, and we've got a new object. And now make note. Whoops, note. Just make note. And then um, push the space bar, and you'll see that the first number that you'll get is velocity. So let's pick something in a medium range that we can hear okay like um let's well i'll just pick 100 so that 
it'll be loud enough for you to hear. If it's too loud for you, either turn your volume down or um, put in a lower number. And then duration, and this is in uh, milliseconds. So let's make each note last for 500 milliseconds. Now, why do we use the make note thing here is because this keyboard in this mode, and we're going to change it halfway through this tutorial, it doesn't send note off messages, and we need the note off, you may remember. So the make note, every time you send it a note, it makes a note at 100 volume for um, 500 milliseconds, unless you change it, which you could do with this. But here is the pitch that we're going to send in it. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And then what comes out of it is the pitch output and the velocity. Now, for the moment, we're just going to ignore this velocity because the pitch is going to be enough. And then we're going to use another new object, I suppose. We haven't used it before. Type N again. Type PAC, P-A-C-K. Do not be fooled by PAC, P-A-K. Then spacebar zero, spacebar zero. Those are just our initial numbers until this make note supplies some new numbers. So let's put them in like so, and then connect this down to MIDI format where previously we had just played note number 60 and note number 60, excuse me, a 60 with a 127 and a 60 with a zero. Okay, um, and let's just put another message underneath pack so we can see what's going on, but I'm going to put it over here so you can see it um, when we play. So here it is, there it is, and uh, here we'll put it over by the 60s. Now lock your patcher and let's play an F. Hello F. So um, turning up my volume and I'll play G. So you see it went 55 100 and then half a second later it went to 55 0. That is exactly what we always want this to do. So now we can play uh, a nice tune. Man, just like that. So Mary had a little lamb. We people are already playing the piano on our computer. We're geniuses, but we're going to take it a little bit further than that level of genius. What if we decided that we were going to take the information from our computer keyboards and feed it into this keyboard so we could see what was going on and then play in a different mode, meaning polyphonic, that we could play two notes at the same time. Yes, that is exactly what we're going to do. But before we do that, let's clean up a little bit here because this kind of mess could really drive you crazy. So let's just um, unlock our patcher and uh, grab some stuff and get it out of the way. I'm going to just push this down here, um, this MIDI stuff down here. So much junk around here. It's uh, Okay, because we need some room to, to groove here. Um, and we'll take these out. Whoops, missed them. There we go. We don't need any of those anymore. We can delete them. In fact, you know, we're going to leave these. I guess we don't need that too. Everything helps. But these um, will remind us of what they are in case we want to add them in later. We've got our... Um, okay, so now let's take this whole thing and set it down here because we have a new um, part that we want to make here. I'm even going to move load bang over here. So type N for new object, K-E-Y, key. Just click outside here. You've got key, key. Are we going to start adding stuff? No. What are we going to do, class? Bueller, Bueller, anybody? We're going to option click on it as we do. We get the help file. And um, what does key do? We can 
find out what key does. Um, look, it says press any key. I'm going to press the letter A. Look, you get 97, 0, 0, 97. If I hit the shift key and hit A, I get a 512. That tells me I've hit the shift key. The 97 tells me the original key was A, and the 65 is the number that's reported for a, sh for a capital A. So um, you can try this with uh, different uh, letters on the keyboard and see what you get. It's all very interesting, but let's unlock the patcher and steal this baby right now. Command copy or control copy on a PC. Command W, close that window. Don't save it. Don't be tempted. Delete that key and paste this one. Oops, it pasted way over there. Here it is. Okay, so there's key. I'm going to just move these up a little bit because I don't know why they're down so low. And for our purposes, we just want to know what the original key is. These are interesting, and maybe you could do something with them later, but I'll tell you what, we'll be kind to them. We'll just move them over here. But this is the one we want. So just locking our patcher and checking there's A, yes, it's 97 again, and that's what we want. Now, we have a little trick that I do here um, to decide uh, to, what, what we're going to do is sort of superimpose a keyboard on our computer keys. So for me, I'm going to make it like, I'm just going to run up the keyboard as though they were the white keys. So it's going to be like A, S, D, F, right? So A, W, S, E, D, F, T, etc., etc., right? But it's really hard to remember them all. So here's a little trick. Unlock your patcher. I, I love that this is always changing to whatever you you've last typed. Um, and let's type um, N for new object. Type prepend. And you may recall that that means that it puts something on the beginning of every message. And the thing we're going to put on the beginning of every message is the word append, which means put this on the back of every message. So why would we do that? Because I want to store up everything that we type. So doing this very carefully, we'll type M. And now normally we capture, like if we just want to know what things are, you've seen me do this all the time with these message boxes. I, I connect it over here. But with the prepend um, tool up here, we're going to go in the left inlet and just watch what happens. I'm going to type, I'm going to type, on my keyboard the the uh, keys that I want to correspond to like C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, etc, etc, right? So here I go. Here's A. Oops. Um, I didn't lock my patcher, so it, it gave me an Atrui object. Just delete that. Click in here. Delete everything in there. Click outside and now lock your patcher so that we don't have any of that nonsense. And now watch what happens. So I'm going to go. This is starting at C, but I, I can't say all these at the same time. Or maybe I can. Okay. A is going to be C. And then W is going to be C sharp. S is going to be D. And E is going to be D sharp. See why I can't do it? Because it's so complicated. D is going to be E, and there is no E sharp, so I'm going to go right to F, which happens, weirdly enough, to be F. T is going to be F sharp. G, strangely enough, is going to be G. Y is going to be um, G sharp. H is going to be A. U is going to be, oh, am I losing track? A sharp, and then uh, J is going to be B, and then there is no B sharp. It you just go right to C, which is going to be K, and then C sharp is going to be O, 
L is going to be D. P is going to be D sharp. And semicolon is going to be E. If you did that and didn't lose your mind, you now have a list of numbers that are going to work very nicely for your um, uh, for your keyboard. So um, be very careful. Uh, gosh, I, I don't know if I can actually get it to uh, not type anything after 59. So we're going to just remember that we ended on 59 here, right? Because we'll tell you what, I'm going to go down and actually manually unlock my patcher. Now I'm going to click in here and copy all these numbers. Command C. Thank goodness it worked. Okay. Now that you've copied them, let's um, go over here, uh, make a new object, and we're going to call it select. Do you remember select? I think we've selected before. And now I'm just going to paste them in there. Okay. So what happens when you get hit select? Select, if the number 97 comes in, it's going to deliver a bang right here. And if a uh, 119 comes in, it's going to make a bang here. And if 115 comes in, it's going to hit a bang here. So now these numbers that are coming in um, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't think I need it anymore. But is it wasn't that handy? Was that handy? It was handy. Okay. Um, these numbers that are coming in here are going to bang and make numbers that um, will trigger these keys. And I don't know a better way to do this. So, so we could um, just send out a number for each one of these. Like if we want to see, which I believe is number 48. Uh, let's just test that. Is that number? Uh, I'm going to lock my patch real quick here. Yeah, so what we want is a number 48. So we could go up here and uh, type a message 48, right? And then have this bang on this, send the 48 down to here, and it would play that note. And then we'd have to make a 49 for this and a 50, etc., etc., etc. But there is an object that's going to do all that for us, I'm happy to say. And so this is how we're going to do it. Type N for a new object, and now type funnel. F-U-N-N-E-L, then a space, and I believe we, um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, 17 numbers we have there, and now we're going to do an offset is the next thing here. You see it right down there, offset of, what did I say, 48. Okay. So what a funnel does, I'm going to put it up here, and then I'm going to stretch it out so we have a one-to-one -one correspondence from thing to thing here, right? So let's just connect them. And while we're connecting them, I'll just go on talking. So what funnel does is that for every note coming in each one of these successive inlets, it assigns a number for the inlet and then tells what the message is. In this case, the message is just bang, so it's nothing. So either we're going to get a bang or a zero out of it. It doesn't really matter to us what it is, but the number that comes in before it will be like, if it's the leftmost outlet, would normally be a one, except we put an offset there. The offset is 48, so it's going to start... Uh, let me just finish here. There we go. This one, you'll notice if you hover over it, is if the input doesn't match any of these. So this one should not be connected to anything. Got not connected to anything. If you connect this to something, you're going to get some real interference patterns. Okay, so going back to that, that means that this number, because it has an offset of 48, will get a 48 assigned to the front of it, this one a 49, this one a 50, this one a 51, etc., 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 all the way up. And the really cool thing is, we can change this number, but we'll get to that later. So coming out this end, type a message, and we'll just lock our patcher and see what happens. There's the A. We get a 48 and a 0. That is so cool that I almost can't stand it. So 
That means that because we're not paying any attention at all to the velocity here, we could just hook this up right now, right? Lock our patcher and play it. Oops, volume's down again. Right? There we go. Um, I mean, I am just playing so fast on my keys now, and because we're using the make note and it forces these things to stay on for half a second, it sounds like we're getting multiple tones. But in this particular mode, um, this keyboard can only output one number at a time. So, um, cause, and I only tell you that because we're about to change between it. Um, so with this little thing right here that spits out um, a note for every keystroke that you put in, to take this to the next level here, um, what we want to do is encapsulate this. Actually, not this. Um, well, we'll do it the we'll do it the visual way. Oops, I guess it's going to do that all the time when we're hitting keys. There we go. So we still just have this one. Let's take this whole thing here, right, and duplicate it. Okay. So just Option click on it and drag a new one over here, and then see if you can get them to fit. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. What I meant to do was drag this over here and these three over here and this over here so that we can see what we're doing for a minute. And then here's this one here, the other key. I'm going to grab these three, drag them over here. We hardly even need to see the other end of them. They all seem to be working just fine. Now, crucial difference here. If we want to have note on and no off, note off, we want to be able to hold our keys down and then know when they come up. So we're going to change this object. Pay attention here. Key up. It's the same as key, but it's key up. So now, uh, lock your patcher and play an A and see what happens. You push down on the A, you get a 97 and nothing happens over here until you let off the key. I'm letting off the key. There it is. Key up. Now, that means we're going to get one 48 over here when the key goes down and a 48 over here when the key comes up. And now we just have to figure out how to do one other very funny thing, which is to give this a velocity that we want. So let's, <laughs> I like the sound effects. It's sort of like uh, Stephen Colbert when he sets his drink on the imaginary piano. Anyone know what I'm talking about there? Bueller, Bueller. Okay, N, and then type slider, right? So a slider almost automatically comes up as something uh, vertical like this. Let's make it a little wider so we can look at it in all its prettiness. Okay, there's the slider, and it'll spit out if you don't change it. Um, I know, I end up with so many messages from like checking how things are working. Here, let's lock our patcher real quick and slide from the bottom to the top. 127 at the top, 0 at the bottom. You can change that, but 0 to 127 is exactly what we want. So check this out. This is going to come out here, and I'm going to want it to say uh, 51 and whatever my volume is. Now, whoops, <laughs> sound effects please. Um, so type the letter N over here and type POC, P-A-K, and then type zero space zero. So what is so cool about POC is that if you, whoops, I take it back, make it pack, 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 it's pack, sorry pack. Whew, I nearly blew it there. With pack, you can change the number over here 
and nothing will happen until you send it a note here. So you don't want this thing sending out notes while you change your volume. And I got momentarily confused there. So now what we're going to do is connect this to the right hand outlet. Okay. And this to the left hand outlet. And then we're going to do a funny thing that um, which is just connect this directly up here. And you can with many max objects send two numbers in a left hand inlet instead of one in the left hand inlet and one in the right hand inlet, right? You could send the velocity in here, but it's more convenient for us to send it in here and you can do that. It understands it. Trust me on this for a minute. Okay. Now, if this one, um, let's move this down here so we don't just keep collecting um, more message boxes. So now if I turn my volume up to 108 and then I lock my patcher and hit a key like A, you would think that because this 108 came down here and it also came over to here, that I would get uh, a 48 or a, let's say a 50, um, 108. So I hit the S key and hello. There we go. Um, and I get a zero. It, it plays anyway, but that that's just that. But I get a zero and that's not what I want. And the reason for that is because this is sending out a 50 and a 0 and it's replacing uh, the 108. So what I need to do is modify this real quick and unpack this number. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to type, uh, oops, unlock my patcher there, type an N, say unpack 0 space 0 and using the shift technique to insert it in that in that line now this is going to separate the the first the 48 49 50 from the zero that's coming out with it so the zero is just going to come out here and it's not going to do anything it's just going to fall off there go away because i'm not hooking it to anything and now the only thing feeding in here is going to be the volume. So let's see if we can get that to work now. Does this make sense? I hope it does. Um, and so now I'm going to hit uh, A again and let's just see what we get. Okay, so that's what we want. 48, 110, and that's uh, 110 there. So we're feeding a 48 and a 110 in there. And then when we let off of it, we're going to want to get a 48, 0 which we seem to be getting over here already. Cool. However, the only reason that all of this is not working perfectly is because we're in the wrong mode right now. So let's unlock our patcher, click on the K slider, uh, open the inspector. Come on over here, inspector. We want to see you. Okay. And then, um, we're going to scroll on down here to mode, display mode, monophonic. That is so monophonic. We want polyphonic. And now things are going to change quite a bit. It just, um, excuse me, it just plays, it can play multiple notes now. And so, Going back over here, we can now connect this to there. And more excitingly, we can get rid of the make note because now we can decide how long the notes are going to be here. So let's um, let just delete make note. And we're going to gather these up and pack them and send them down to our MIDI format there. And now what we're going to be watching is this right here to see um, that we can uh, get the note on and note offs to work. 
I hope this is making sense, that we can get 60, 127, and then 60, 0. Well, if we change this to 127, we can. Uh, there we go, 127, and then what would 60 be? See, look, oh my goodness, so good. So here's hitting 60, and that's a high C. And you can see over here, the message is 60, 127, and now when I let off of it, 60, 0. So it sounds just the same as when I go, is hitting C, and letting go of it. Well, which is the letter K on my keyboard now. So now I can, but check this out, I can now play chords. And I can hold them on and off. I know you can't see what my fingers are doing, that's just the way it is. But I can decide that I'm going to be like playing. All right, chopsticks, everything. We have it totally made here. And now the only thing that we really um, have to do is to make a really nice um, uh, display unit out of it, right? So, well, actually, that's not the only thing. I lied. You know what? I'll take care of that in the next video. Um, making a nice display unit out of your MIDI keyboard. I think we've gone on long enough now, and for goodness sake, we're playing music. Uh, don't stop the music, right? Well, that was fantastic, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video an even better MIDI controller, or an even better title, whatever I name it. Thanks for watching. Patch well.